elections are here again and they have all gathered they will offer you money don't take it they are desperate pretending to care they will make fake promises be wise hello and welcome to your favorite program the youths and the politics I am Oyeleke Paul Okoyemi. I know you must have seen lots of interviews from us. And um, this is still your favorite TV station, Amibo TV2, your best online TV. And today it's not something unique, but it's something special. Um, I have with me That's appearance me. in um, Kaduna State, House of Reps, Zaria Constituency. And today, um, I know you want to see the previous man, you want to see that unique man today. And mind you, don't forget, it's still that your favorite program. By the way, before I introduce him, just stay tuned. Shin, ko kun san matasa suke da kusan kashi 65 na yawan jama'ar Nigeria? Hukumar zabe mai zaman kanta ta kasa ta fara aikin register masu jefa kuri'a. Saboda haka, wannan ba karamar dama bace a gare mu matasa da za mu iya amfani domin saukar da nauyi a matsayin mu na yan kasa matsayin mu na matasa da wannan hanyar ce kawai muke iya amfani domin gabatar da muryoyin mu wurin gyara kurakurai da muke fuskanta yawan mu ba karamar dama bace a gare mu haka zalika ba za mu iya cin magorin mu ba na kawo canji ga kurakurai da muke fuskanta har sai mu yi register da mallakar katin zabe domin samun ingantacciyar kasa Nigeria. Wanna I can register the Akafara? Ambu de Shine Gasaba Bumas register. The one the Siki the Katun. A masana son Chanzaru Farzati. The one the Katun Suyabachi. The Pumawa and the Siki son Yarang Bayan and the Kikan Katun. Saku e Amfani the Adoration Yanar Gizu. Now register the Zabi to Hukuma Ainek Kamarhaka. CVR dot Ainek dot Gov dot NG. Hukuma CVR dot Ainek Nigeria dot ORG. Do a fire register. The Kumayi register Ghana wa the Ma Ekatong Kumar Zabi. A Ofishima Ki Kusanchi Agariuku. Do a mint Oka Rotunya Su, the Kuma Kuska. Kuman Leki Katan Zabi, Do a minka Sanchi wa chicken babber Maria. You don't want to miss this episode of this program. I have with me in the house, um, Honorable May Jamaha who is coming out for member, House of Reps, um, Zara Constituency in Kaduna State. So please, um, Honorable, how are you doing today, sir? Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, and how's been your political experience, sir? Well, it has been on, on the track, and uh, we believe in time, gradually, we are making success upon it. And, uh, you can imagine the way the system is changing because uh, the politics of today it's given a meaning whereby the vulnerable, the members in the community, and so on and so forth, they are willing to change their mind, change their mindset by bringing someone who is going to change their ways of life, primarily upon the same PDP and other parties. And um, I still want to say something briefly. I am Ahmed Abdullahi Majama by name from uh, Zaria Kaduna State, seeking for the seat of our uh, House of Representatives at uh, Green, Chamber, uh, Green Chamber. And um, politics is a game of number, it's a game of commitments and time. Yeah. And uh, in the politics of today, we feel to understand that youths have a better role to play in such a way that success and achievement will be recorded within the cycle of the youth and even, even the elders and even the younger ones coming up. So in a clear perspective, I'm looking at it this way. 
we just need to commit ourselves on the track and be needful and pray. Allah will see us through and for us to succeed on our, on our discipline journey. Um, honorable, I get to realize that um, most of the youth in Zaria, if you talk to them now, they say um, they want a youth to lead them, they want a youth to lead them. So I don't know, what do you have to say about this youth coming up for a post? And as a youth as well, what well, are the challenges? Well, you see, the game is changing, okay? Why I look at it, why I said the game is changing is that uh, the society is speaking on the youth, okay? whereby most social vices and series of commitments that are illegal to the society are mainly measured on the youth. Wow. Whereby you see that problems of all this talking, uh, uh, smoking, drinking, all social vices in society are mainly stomped on, this, on the youth. The youth. Yes. So, how, how do you accumulate policies that will be going to bring changes to those youths. The only way to do that in it is just that to accommodate and accumulate them into the politics. Not just allowing you to partake in the politics in terms of election, vandalization of boxes, all these crises during election, that is not the work of the youths. The youths are the backbone of every society. This youth you are seeing we call ourselves youth, we are still the youth and we are grown up youth. We must know that tomorrow, if the youth of this time are not being accommodated in such a way, they will be the first set of people to absorb the leaders. Okay, okay still on the youth matters, we look at when youth are running, trying to contest from one post to another, to another, to, to another, is trying to establish like a forum for the elders to know that yes, the boys, the youth are coming up. Not, not that let the elders retire politically. No. They should be trying to build the strength of politics in okay. Because an adage says every gathering, any gathering that involves youth, that doesn't involve elders in it, is like a dream that they would. Because youth are agitated, I want to hold a position, I want to come up, I want to overtake. How would we overtake without knowing where was the situation before and where was the situation it is and how are you going to establish it? So running for any post that involves youth, it involves commitment of elders. Like myself, I'm an Abdullah Ibn Jamaa. I love to seek from the elders, the elders and the carcass of Zaria. So many of them will consult them, will visit them, will seek advices from them. Why do you have to do that? It's because from where they stopped, that's where you're going to pick it, from, pick it up. Yeah. So youth need to bring this shoulder down by saying, that's what you do. No youth can build a society alone. So youth need to come up, need to pull strength, agitate for the right thing to do, Put every energy you could in you so that you'll be able to have what it takes a smooth administration so that whatever balances and chances of any position that comes from every government office will be shared within the youth. Wow. But not just allowing you to sit down redundantly and lock tightly until election day. Pieces of cut classes and what have you be given to you and a little of money for your India and what have you to go and Conducting and, conducting and coordinating illegally. So youths need to do the right thing by establishing from the elders so that even when youth are being given, given the opportunity to go tomorrow, my brother, the destination will be smooth and great. Yeah, according to what you just said, you said you made mention of the youths consulting the elders. And um, I, think, um, I think that is one of the agitations of the youth that they want to take away Godfatherism in Nigeria. I, I don't know. I don't know if you're seeing it that way, the way I'm seeing it. Like talking to the elders, Godfatherism, I think it has to do with the youth and, youth and the elders. There are two different things here. Consulting elders and Godfatherism is a two different thing. Okay? Consulting elders is seeking the knowledge of what you are to do when you God for that reason is someone who don't know what to do and how to do it at a time for him because he has a boss close to him. That boss who said, I don't want anybody ignore my boy. 
that word God for that is in that country. Now, if you look at the situation on ground, Nigeria is a country we have and we must solve our problems within us. Yes. If today we want to make the positive changes to the society, definitely we need to make commitments, sacrifices, and make establishments. So, consulting elders is the best way seeking politically for an office. He or she will have an idea of what you don't know. And as it says, what an elderly man saw. Even a child would climb mountain Everest and will never see it. So these are the two balancing you need to understand in terms of uh, consulting of elders and godfatherism. Duly, Nigerian got independent in 1960, right? And uh, was amalgamated in 1914. Yeah. There are some series of strategic plans which were done by the elders on the land. Without you consulting the elders, you will not know where the problem is. That's true. You know what the problem is. Ah, because it's a point blank that no knowledge is wasted. You must seek the policy and the custom and the custom in governance before you be able to know. That are uh, this are the reason why we consult elders, we consult political parties, we consult whoever is needed for you to consult in terms of seeking of advices before you do something. And finally, generally, I look at Godfatherism is a policy being established by some people. It's only my boy can go there. Not looking at the capacity and the capability of that your boy. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. So you need to do what is right by selecting the best candidate for that special office. Selecting a candidate politically doesn't mean you are just assuming somebody to go there. But you are assuming someone to go there and do the work. Like, let me set an example with the seat I'm going, of, I'm going for. House of Prives is a seat that demands deliberation, debating, requesting from the chamber to establish policies that is going to be useful to the constituency. Not just sitting redundantly and relaxing and collecting constituency allow bringing to people, buying this, buying that. No. A House of Red member is someone that has to be a backbone okay. of that constituency. Okay. If everything happens to do like the security matters we are facing in this present dispensation of time, you may see that most of them are just relaxing. In that sense, it's more for you to relax. It's a way you must establish yourself, you must get ready to serve the masses that voted you into the office, and you must make huge commitment. Not just commitment, huge commitments. How do you make huge commitment? Is for you to establish policies, cultures, and activities that is going to engage those people from a constituency, from look and claim of why you are governed. So, conclusively, this is a two perspective. I think the differences between confederalism and the consultation of others. Okay. Okay, um, as you can hear that the difference between Godfatherism and the Godfatherism of all of the elders. Um, I know you're enjoying this, but we just have to go on a short break. We'll be back soon. The general elections are here again, and it's our collective responsibility to let our voices be heard. But before you vote again, you have to confirm your registration and ensure you have a permanent voter's card. You will not be able to vote without your PVC. Visit www.govote.ng and follow the instructions to check your status and to find out where to pick up your PVC. Registration confirmation and PVC collection closes very soon. Do do right then. Vote. This message is brought to you by govote.ng and initiate of a co-creation hub and enough is enough all right welcome back if you're just joining us you're still on your favorite program the youths and politics i still remain your humble presenter we like paul and um, today i know you've been enjoying uh, our discussion for this political talks i still have our honorable major maha in the house who is um contesting for the post of member um, House of Representative Zaria Constituency here in Kaduna State. I want to tell you I have learned a lot from uh, what he has actually said today. But don't still keep it down. Let's still learn more. Um, honor Honorable, I actually learned a lot from what you have um, actually enlightened us on Godfatherism and uh, the situation of the elders. That's consulting the elders, rather. Yeah. Um, Honorable, you can see like the situation of the country today. We can see that we have lots of challenges. 
So what can you say about the security challenges of um, Nigeria as a whole, not just the North? Well, security challenges uh, yeah. is a matter of... Okay, let me make it this way. You know, when you talk of security of the nation, it's a, it's a very big challenge, democratically, politically, socially, economically, and even physically. Why I make why I to make so is that uh, the system is erupted. I won't say the government of the day are not trying, but administratively they failed. Because the first target for any democratic system or democracy administration is to protect the lives of the citizens and their property. Okay. So today if you look at the situation, if here is being folded or that Nigeria is like a self down. When you fold the other side, the other side had folded itself. But they fail because they refuse to listen and reason from the carcass. Why do I say carcass? There are some people who, if the, if the, uh, uh, the present administration, that's the APC administration today, has consulted deep where, where it's supposed to, definitely these security challenges would have been covered. We won't say during uh, our former administration, that's the PDP administration, we are not supporting each other. Well, there are, but unlike what is happening now, okay, lives and properties are being lost, used, destroyed daily. The government of the day need to do something fast. Yeah. I am not tarnishing any administration, but politically, we must say APC has failed. They failed because. The expectation were high. The level of commitment will the citizen give to them were high. The level at which the commitment were given today, each and every individual from every society, both from the northern region of the country, from the southern, from the eastern point, everybody is everywhere is shedding blood. Okay. If you talk of security challenges, is the challenges that involve me and you. It's for all. That's why the party, that's why the party, the background, whether you are APC, where you are Africa, where you are ACN, or whatever you come from, or whatsoever party you belong to, the security matters is for all. We must work together, we must come together, we must challenge ourselves to establish that let our generation come in, let them benefit from what is happening. How do you come overcome a security challenges overnight? That is the question. When you look down on the administration, the past administration of a, a PDP, they said PDP failed, PDP could not do this, PDP could not do that. That is not how to approach problems. When you want to approach problems, you have to place, place tests to examine what were the lapses the last administration had and how do we come in. With the little knowledge I have, happens to be an academician, the little knowledge I seek from my students and my mentors and my bosses and service. These challenges have to involve everybody. Now, what is happening between Kaduna to Abuja, from Zaria, uh, from Kaduna to Zaria, from here to Zalfara, from Zalfara to KB, from KB to Sokoto, you know, these are the problems. Doesn't, it's not only mine for only APC, it's for all. My basic advice here is that. Uh, this is why I must tell the truth. The masses of the Federal Republic of Nigeria need to embrace PDP back. Those security architectures of the present administration has failed. So let's try the PDP to come on board to display their own talent they've been displaying to some security challenges. Let me cite three examples in which everybody must believe. Like that of the Niger States. The Dr. Mahaz Mabangir Ali will play a better role in terms of challenging the security problems in Niger State, which everybody knows. Okay. Similarly, Jigawa State, Sulalangu has done his best. Oh, that's why Kokoso does his best. A lot of PDP governors at that time, they did the best to make sure that even the Kaduna State, when Bamalaya was in the office, he had done his best by bringing a series of conditions from all this vigilante, from Alukwara, and what have you, to sweep Kaduna clean. And that is the motto. And today, Kaduna State has been smelling and shedding blood daily. 
We believe no administration will come on board without having lapses, but let the lapses not be on human kings. So I plead from the present administration and dispensation of time, they should walk towards the door of success by establishing the real fact to embrace the policy of saving lives and property. Because these are the masses who voted you into the office and the same people who have been followed to their homes, to their villages, to their families and been killed and collect their ransoms. Someone, the, the, most, the, most, the most scary aspect of it, someone frying a car by the roadside will be taken away and seeking for the ransom of 100 million. How would that one go? So I I get to I get to understand that the the reasons for most of these security um, issues in Nigeria I get to realize that it's it's all lied on the fact that poverty has actually eaten into we the Nigerians. So now I don't know, um, honorable, how do you feel or how do you think or what are the strategies that you have put in place to see how you can eradicate poverty in Nigeria? Not just your constituency as a member, but Let's start with your constituency. Okay. How do you how do you see property among the youths? And you know when, when the youths are, are, are enlightened and they, they, they get to, to, to work on these property elevation programs, I don't know how or, or let's say what did you have actually put in place? Well, politically every contestant has his own manifestation, but for the benefit of time I can only see some. Okay. Like in my own constituency Zaria, I have to side that's the member representing Zaria City and the member representing Zaria Kiway. Okay. That's the two state assembly members and I've been happens to be in charge of uh, 13 words. Okay. So basically every society or every community you see that happens to be under your constituency, you must look at what are the major challenges of that community. What is given to constituency A might not be favorable to constituency B. Because, like, I have three constituencies who happens to be solidly the Ameli farmers. That of the Uchicheli, the Dango, the Dusa Abba, and that of Opaina aside. These are the four words I have who happens to be the allergy farmers who put full commitment of cultivation, rearing animals, and what have you. On the basis of that, we must establish how we can come in and making policies that are going to exonerate the level of achievement to the women at home, to the younger ones, and even the men in the system. Now, from my own side, I had a dream whom I feel is a dream that is going to be achievable, inshallah. And uh, upon that dream, this dream is a dream of trying to make a son of no one, trying to become someone. How? is true free education. Okay. Free delivery services to primary health care centers, free drugs, establishing normal principles that an ordinary man on the street can benefit without stressing. If today, a single person, change begins with me. That's what they said. Begins with you and me. If we can start making this change between myself and you from this minute, definitely something will come up. Eradicating property is not about sharing motorcycles. If uh, the administration of the day would well, like, let me, let, me, let me just check this something. If you want to solve a problem of a community, single handedly as a leader, you can do that. Okay, we must go through consultation, consult those people in the society, in that community. What is your problem? What are the problems? You look at the problems, you tell them, you do what will touch their lives. Sorry to say, my fellow politicians of present dispensation of time, their own agitation is uh, when you said you are feeling headache, they give you 1,000 naira one thousand naira. That's not what it takes to do. My own aims and objective is to show you how to make, but not how to give you. Okay? If you can show a particular person, training him in such a way, 
even if it is, let's say, there are a series of works within society that this truth that have been left alone only during political, political, political time will embrace them, give them gift of money, cut lasses, eat them, smoke, whatever. If we can enroll them into all this handworking, making carpentry, mechanics, sewing, uh, industry, series of commitments, it reduces poverty. Okay. Because a boy woke up in the morning, will have where to go. After school, we go to his working place, from working with his place, he's tired, the next he come with a little change. What he can only time to spend is just between that from 9, 8, from 7, 8, 9, 10. He's gone to bed. Tomorrow morning, school. When youths are being committed, poverty will reduce this. You train a boy to go and make little money like 10 to 15 naira, 20 naira, and um, tomorrow morning, he won't ask you, won't you give me money out to go to school, of course. So, bring policies that are going to touch human life is the best way of eradicating poverty. Buying this, buying that, establishing it's something that has to do with factors. Like someone that's having a headache. Now you're not giving medicine for leg. <laughs> you understand? How will it work for him? You must check and regulate the effective and the efficiency of that society. What are the basic and primary needs that you now come in? You touch a little, the whole society will speak of it. And once you touch human lives, that is what really makes you to be a person. All right, uh, so I'm you're still enjoying your program, <laughs> the youths and politics. I have actually learned a lot for today. As a youth outside there, what have you actually planned? What have you actually said to say to yourself concerning this 2023 political um, election coming up? So, I am not saying you shouldn't actually take your cutlass, but you can take your cutlass. Where are the children of these politicians that are telling you to go and pick cutlass? Honorable, you can join you you're actually saying your mission is very well. Yeah, you know, um, there's something I actually want to say last before we actually dismiss from this place. But before that question, I would like us to go on a short commercial break. So your power to change Nigeria is in your hands. Your voice now your power for change, oh my people, oh. It's not just the voters card, it's your part to change Nigeria for good. You can collect your permanent voters card previously at your local government office until January 31st. Ah, ah. Your part to change Nigeria is in your hands. Your voice and your power for change, oh my people. It's not just the voters card, it's your part to change Nigeria for good. Collect your PVC. In case you're just joining us, I believe you're not too late. It's still your favorite program, Youth and Politics. Honorable just said something about the youth, and I'm happy to enlighten you more that we, the youth, we need to wake up this time. And who am I to say the youth is to wake up when I have an honorable <laughs> close by? <laughs> All right, uh, if you're still watching this, if you're still online, if you're still with us, don't forget it's still the youth and the politics. 2023 is far approaching. What do you have? What do you have to offer? What do you have to say? And what do you have? And how do you want to select your representative? Um, Honorable, there is a last question I want to ask you, which I am actually looking at. You see, concerning these political parties, we talk about PDP, APC, APGA, and but I can actually talk about PDP and APC. I get to realize that most of the people in APC today, they are the people right in PDP before. Mm. They just amalgamated down to APC. Mm. So um, now we're coming back. Are we choosing political party or the individual coming out for this particular position? Let's say, for instance, I I want to I want to I want to vote you, but you're coming from APC. Should I not vote you because you're coming from APC? Or I should just say because you're in PDP and I don't like PDP, I want to vote you out because you're not in the party I want. So what do you have to say about that? Well, if you look at uh, 
political system, political system we have in Nigeria, the basic standard structure we had for the parties, only the PDP and the APC. Yes. So you are seeing something simple from PDP, from APC now, are moving back to the Yes, yes. Let me tell you, this uh, this political party I see, my big party, the party, the greatest party in the whole African continent is PDP. Okay. And uh, PDP has a structure that most of the party or entity obtain that structure. And um, it's a party that owns a very standard constitution that governs the appearance of the party and political system in Nigeria. Let me just tell you something. PDP is the best party, I see, because every political party being established today are pulling their ideas to PDP. So a lot of people will leave APC coming back to PDP. There are these, uh, I would like to salute and acknowledge the convention that was held in 2021. It was really achievable. It was a friend, a brother, a colleague who happens to be the national unit leader. That's just Yuna Kadadi from my zone, from my zone, that's Juan Kaduna, uh, from Zaria. So we yeah. have this a very mutual approach saying that it's only PDP among all the political party will absorb the youth of 25 years as a national youth leader. And why I'm still emphasizing on my own party, not because I'm PDP, is because of the transparency in the leadership of PDP. So anyone that wants to join PDP will have to stay back and watch the steps of the PDP. The PDP they are seeing now is not the PDP you know before. Okay, okay, okay. The PDP you are seeing now is held by a very solid national chairman who happens to obtain rules and regulation. And when you join the party in a recent time, you must follow the rules and regulation of the party before you be given an opportunity to contest for any seat. Because look, if you look at the inter-party relationships that uh, people will leave APC, come back to PDP because they want to contest. What about those that stays in the PDP from the dispensation of time up to the minute today? These are the two challenges we have. Okay. Tra transparency in PDP will give you room or forum to drag matters where they are going to be absorbed. I know, and I must say this, that this inter-crisis happening from my angle to another party, every party has their own crisis. But what I do, PDP is the best party for the Nigerians, and Nigerians made mistakes. Okay. Believing in a single entity is the only person who's going to fix Nigeria. Where is Nigeria today? Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention me because I'm on top of the world. But I must say this to the whole world that the country is bleeding daily. Okay. Life and property are consumed. This is the reason why you see the remnants of APC now are now tripping back to PDP because they are now seeing the reality that it's only PDP that is going to make justice to them. Okay? And justice must be done according to justification of justice. No party on earth, not even in the African region, in the whole world, doesn't have one or two mistakes to be fixed. Okay? But PDP is the easiest and the simplest party that gives room for a vulnerable ones in the society to benefit direct. Without agitating, I must pass through this. The aims of PDP is, I want to appeal to Nigerians from the seat of presidency down to conservation. We are changing this politics back to our party because let's not use cutlass or whatever it is. Use your PPC. I want to appeal to every Nigerian, every youth that feels the administration has failed to some aspect of whatsoever view, please go and register your voter's card. That is the only way we can drive this people out. They prove they know better than us. Today, who is familiar with? I want to ask you, who is who? 
<laughs> Although that question should be for your audience, I believe, and not for me. You ask me. <laughs> I'm saying to the audience, who is fooling who? Yeah, honorable. What I'm actually saying mm -hmm. in now today is we are trying to balance it now, the APC, the PDP, and you know APC is actually on in power. APC is in power now. Yeah. How do you think do you think of the, the, the people in power will just allow PDP to just come in just like that? Well, for every incumbent administration, yeah, in office we will not have to release power like that. Okay, okay. But he who gave them the opportunity to be where they are today, we are seeking from him to bring us back to where we are before. Okay. And last one to Allah had reason for everything. I will say this to Nigeria. Nigeria, when everybody was in money, so this is how I look at it. If we still want to believe and tell the society that we want to change this system, if you look at their motto is change, when we are now coming on board now, we are telling the society is we are changing for a better change. We are changing for a better change. Okay? Society and the masses are crying. Because administratively, PDP is the best administration ever on the surface of the earth. Across the governors, the, gov the governors of the state, down to the state assembly, the reps, and even the chairman, even the councillors. The network is touching. PDP established a network of touching people's life. These people came on board and built their administration that we don't have money. Do you think there's any day that money will come? This is how the administration will end. We don't have money and there's no money. So I appeal to my fellow Nigerians. It's high time. How someone says, come my gi, ya wai, eat and tie It's better to know where you are and to go back where you are from. If not, what we are seeing we are not praying for it. We are seeking Allah SWT will guide and protect us in every step we are making. And indeed, Nigeria need changes. And please and please, my fellow youth in Nigeria, we can't just change with ordinary mouth sitting by the roadside at the corner under the sheet and blah blah blah. Please go and register your voter stand. Stand firmly and do what it takes to establish the fact that. PDP is a party to believe, PDP is a party to work for, PDP is the party that is going to be a savior to human life. Thank you. All right, um, you can all hear from the Honorable who says, go and get your PVC, and that should be the right thing for you now. As a youth, there is no voting, there's no voting unit at Facebook. There's no voting unit on Instagram, and there's no voting unit on WhatsApp. So it's better you get to PVC that will make you to make the right selection. That will make you to say, no, this person is not doing well because you voted them into power. But what if you're just ranting on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and WhatsApp? So as soon as I've just said, you will just have to go get your PVC. And he's saying PDP is the best party in Africa, I believe, mean, if yes. I'm not putting you right. Yes. In the world or in Africa? In the whole world. In the whole world, he said. <laughs> you can hear what the, the Honorable will say. Yes. So, um, it's high time we say goodbye to this wonderful program today. But before I go, I have to thank um, my producer, um, my producer, um, person of um, Apu Bakal. We will highly to him well. I also have to thank those people that have been backing up about TV up, but I think they actually texted me that I shouldn't mention names. They have actually been helping us to date. And I bet you we're bringing in another good politician who is coming out for another big post, either being a member, councillor, governorship, or presidential um, aspirant to the same place. And you know, we say youth is what we focus on. So, Honorable, as we're going out, what do you have to say to your audience? Uh, Alhamdulillah, for the gift of life, and uh, I want to appreciate every viewers of 
this program. And I uh, want us to put this at the back of our mind that uh, selecting the best candidate is what matters in every political seat. And establishing the reality to the society is what it takes for a political or for a politician to do by assisting in one way or the other. And on behalf of myself and my family, I want to thank you very much uh, to the studio, Amigo TV station at uh, Mokosh to studio and the house of Mokosh, the candidate of Mokosh, and my amiable friends around me. The Ibrahim, I want to you to say thank you for the mutual support and for the time commitments. And I want to say thank you, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. May Allah SWT, Allah's we are alive to see time and real thing happen in reality for the success and for the benefit of Zaria. And I want to say thank you, my people of Zaria. I'm here right away trying to stand by your side, to stand and struggle for the success of Zaria. And I wish every youth in Zaria to be very good by my side for this a very good journey and commitment to it. And Alhamdulillah, finally, I want to say PDP. Power, PDP, power, PDP, PDP, power. Thank you, one. Thank you, all. Some other time. All right, that's all you had from the honorable. <laughs> uh, it's still your program, the youth and politics. I bet you come next time, come online, come to the station, come to our channel to see more of the interviews of dignitaries coming up your way. I still remain Oyele Kapoor of Oyele. Have a nice day. Thank you. Hello, do you know? that young people constitute about 65% of Nigeria's entire population. The Independent National Electoral Commission has commenced its continuous voters registration exercise. This exercise is for fresh registrants, previously registered voters who wish to transfer their voters card, voters who wish to apply for replacement or lost PVCs, or correct personal information on the register of voters. You can use the INEC voter online registration portal on CVR inec.gov.ng or cvr.inecnigeria.org to pre-register and book an appointment. We are the 2021 Legislative Interns at Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, PLAC. We are asking all young people, indeed all Nigerians, to participate in the current Continued Voters Registration, CVR. Get your PVC today and be involved.